zebra mussels arrived in the United States in the late 1980s in the Great Lakes region. They were probably in the ballast water in a ship from the Middle East, and when it was discharged into our fresh waters, they found a universe full of food and devoid of predators. Zebra mussels spread rapidly throughout the Great Lakes and down the Illinois River, all the way to the Mississippi River. Uh, these are zebra mussels, and, and you can see by looking at this rock how they can colonize a, a rock. Um, this same thing happens to water intake pipes. Uh, the zebra mussels get inside these pipes and, and they attach. The zebra mussels have bissel threads, and uh, they secrete these threads much like a spider uh, secretes threads to uh, to make its web. They're real sticky and real strong and they're able to to hold on to things. Now one of the things that's kind of peculiar to the zebra mussels is they like to build on top of each other. The zebra mussels bissel threads allow them to cling to almost any surface and that's precisely what they do. Attach to any solid object including each other. As they accumulate on machinery they tend to interfere with its operation, whether it is a propeller, a pump, the water intake to a power plant, or the supply intake to Erie's fresh drinking water. Zebra mussels filter plankton out of the water, and they outcompete other animals at this level of the food chain, thus decreasing biodiversity. Their incessant filtering makes the water clearer, and this has dramatically increased underwater visibility. It has also increased the amount of light to greater depths and given rise to much hardier weeds and water plants close to the surface, which in turn impede fishing and water skiing. Looking at the IPM pyramid, there is nothing that can be done culturally. They are very well established in their own world, underwater. In terms of physical mechanical tactics, little can be done to control the spread of zebra mussels, but we can undo some of the harm done to man-made items by scraping them off and restoring equipment to working order. In terms of biological control, there is a very peculiar mixed blessing in the round goby. Biological control of zebra mussels uh, up until recently was limited to uh, basically a, a, we had a few species of fish such as uh, carp and freshwater drum that would eat uh, some zebra mussels uh, but didn't really do much in controlling them. Uh, but in about 1990 uh, the fish called the round goby was probably brought to the Great Lakes the same way that the zebra mussels did. It probably came over in ballast water. The uh, round goby is a small fish that eats zebra mussels. About 70 percent of its diet is zebra mussels. And it has invaded the bottom of Lake Erie. Uh, it's just covered with these fish. And uh, they really eat a lot of zebra mussels. Uh, that sounds like that's a great idea that we finally have a predator over here that can eat zebra mussels. But there are some problems associated with this little fish. What's that? The problem with these gobies eating the eggs of some of the other fish is that they're, they're eating the eggs of the fish like smallmouth bass that the fishermen want to fish for. And if the gobies keep eating their eggs, there may no longer be as many smallmouth bass around for these people to fish for. The gobies uh, build nests, um, they, they lay eggs, but after they lay these eggs, then the male actually sits there and guards the nest to prevent other fish from coming in and eating their eggs. So they're very prolific. Uh, in fact, there are so many gobies on the bottom of the lake out here now that when skin divers go down and swim over the bottom, uh, they say it's just like a moving carpet. There's so many gobies on the bottom of the lake. One of the problems with gobies is that other fish eat gobies. Um, we have the smallmouth bass and yellow perch here in Lake Erie that, that feed on gobies. Uh, the problem with that is that gobies eat zebra mussels which contain a lot of contaminants. And since the, the zebra mussels have contaminants, then the, the gobies get these contaminants in their system and then they pass them on up to the smallmouth bass and yellow perch when they eat the gobies. When people eat the fish, that eat the gobies, the zebra mussels, then the contaminants that were in the zebra mussels end up in the people. When poisonous substances move up the food chain, that's called biomagnification. The goby is just as invasive as the zebra mussel. 
So the net effect between the action of these two invasive species is still a net loss in biodiversity. One might wish to believe that the goby is a biological control for the zebra mussel, but it wasn't planned, and the result is still a system out of balance. Zebra mussels filter plankton out of the water. There are a lot of species of fish out, out in the lake that are dependent upon uh, these different types of plankton when they're small fish to feed on. And because the zebra mussels have filtered a lot of this plankton out, it has changed the, the species of fish that actually live in Lake Erie now and has actually lowered the, the abundance of fish that can live there because there's not as much food left for these fish to feed on. Some of the other ways that round gobies are probably affecting biodiversity is because they eat other fish's eggs. And as they eat the eggs of the other fish, those fish don't have the ability to reproduce as fast as a round goby and are therefore eliminated from the, the lake. There are limited chemical controls for zebra mussels in some instances. Since it's a waterway, strong chemicals are out of the question. However, in certain targeted areas, such as the freshwater intake for Erie's water supply, a small pulse of relatively harmless diluted chlorine can be sent back out through the collection pipe and this prevents zebra mussels from attaching to the inside surface of the pipe. These aquatic invaders could pose a dramatic threat to Pennsylvania's aquatic biodiversity. Just a few miles south of Lake Erie is Lake Edinburgh, now the first inland lake to have zebra mussels. What Pennsylvania Sea Grant is concerned about is transport of the zebra mussels to some of our inland lakes and waterways. And some of the ways the zebra mussels could be transported to our inland lakes are via their boats. Um, the, the boats can have zebra mussels attached to their hulls if the boat was in the water for a long time. Could be attached to the, the prop of the boat. Uh, but also, zebra mussels attached to aquatic vegetation. And the reason this is a problem is because the aquatic vegetation can become attached to the boat prop or even the boat trailer as it's backed into the water. Um, this could then be transported to another lake uh, if, if this vegetation is hanging on the boat or if there are zebra mussels attached to the hull. When the angler or boater gets to the new lake that he wants to go fishing or water skiing at, uh, if he's not careful to remove this vegetation or remove the zebra mussels from the hull of his boat, they can be uh, released into the water, the new lake or new river that he's backing his, his boat into. Wow, you'd have to be pretty thick-skinned not to be bothered by that zebra mussel story. Thanks, Gary. Well, let's head it on toward home. I get around, yeah, get around. Down the same old strip I gotta find a 